Is, uh, is there any path by which I may come down and speak with you? This must be a very lonesome spot to occupy, I should think. I saw you from above. I couldn't help watching. Uh, forgive the intrusion, uh, but I felt I had to know how you... Uh, that light! It's part of your charge, I should say, is it not? Don't you know that it is? You look at me as if you had some dread of me. I assure you there's nothing to fear. Nothing at all to fear. I am simply a man. I have spent much of my life shut up within narrow limits. I've been confined. But now I am free. Why do you stare at me like that, man? I was doubtful whether I'd seen you before. Seen me? Where? Where? There? Why? What should I do there? My good fellow, I was never there in my life. You may swear it. Yes, I... I think I may. Yes. I'm sure I may. It's cold. Well, it's not the work, sir. It's the responsibility. I should have thought there would be. Oh, there's not enough work here to tax the muscles of a child or the brain of a child, let alone a grown man. No, it's the... Uh, it's the responsibility, the duty. You seem to have things pretty much at your command. Well, I believe I do, sir, but it never stops, do you see? It's always there to be done. It's, it's never finished. And these months of late... Yes? Sir, that's my work. That's the sum of it. Nothing there of interest to anyone but myself. But I am interested. So little to do, with so much depending on it. I wonder what you do with your mind. In between your duties, I mean. You cannot spend your whole life reflecting on your responsibilities. Oh, yes, sir, I use my mind. There's precious little profit in it. Oh, you see those books I've been trying to teach myself the mathematics? Fractions, decimals, little algebra. You're a scholar, then? Oh, indeed, I'm not, <laughs> sir, no. <laughs> no, I've no head for figures, and I never had as a boy. No, I, uh, 
could make a very poor figure as a mathematics scholar. Then why? Uh, well, it's a time, sir. I have all the time in the world to fill and nothing to do with the knowledge when I have it. Yeah. Mathematics will do as well as anything else. It serves to pass that. Is everything as it should be? I believe so. Uh, tell me, do you spend all your hours of duty down here? Uh, between these cold, dark walls? I'm accustomed to it. Well, in the early days, I'd sometimes find a slack time to uh, climb up into the sunlight, but my... the work was always here to draw me down. I'd listen for the bell, you see. Well, my face would be in the sun, but my mind would be down here in the dark. And the shadows. I think the mind makes its own places, sir. You speak, forgive me, like a man of education. Oh, I was at one time, sir, a student of natural philosophy. But what's a talus? Nothing. No motion without cause. A reason for everything. I find myself dissatisfied with it. I make yourself comfortable, sir. Responsibilities here. Oh, forgive me. You have no call to be here. And being here, there's no charge on you to do this or that. Sleep or wake, nothing will suffer for it. Oh. What brought you here? I was drawn here. Drawn? Yes. I An accident on this stretch of the line must be a terrible thing. In the tunnel, say. A tunnel collision is the worst to be feared. Your nightmares would go hard to equal it. The wreckage becomes hideously compressed in the confined space. If fire breaks out, the tunnel and its ventilating shafts become furnace flues. You cannot see in the dark to get the wreckage and the bodies out. The screams of the injured and dying echo in a most persistent way. It's the shape of the tunnel, do you see, sir? But you can only do your duty. Oh, yes, sir. And you have all this? This place of peace? And you have no desires to go elsewhere? I have not. 
then I almost believe I have met with a contented man. Well, I must leave you now. It's a fair walk to the inn. I believe I used to be a contented man, sir. But I'm troubled, I'm troubled. With what? What is your trouble? It's very difficult to impart, sir. It's very difficult to speak of, but I... If you care to pay me another visit, I'll, I'll, I'll try to tell you. But I expressly intend to make you another visit. Say, when shall it be? Oh, well, I, uh, I go off duty early in the morning, sir, but I'm on again at uh, 10 o'clock tomorrow night. I shall come at 11. Thank you, sir. Uh, and now I'll show you my white light till you've found your way. And when you've found it, don't, uh, don't call out. And when you come tomorrow night, don't call out. Very well. Let me ask you one question, sir. Hey, what made you say hello below there this evening? Well, heaven knows. I said something to that effect. Oh, not to that effect, sir. Those are the very words. I know them well. I said them, no doubt, because I saw you below. You have no feeling that they were conveyed to you in any supernatural way? No. And I wish you good night, sir, and Godspeed. May I speak now? By all means, sir. Good night, then. And here's my hand. Good night, sir. And here's mine. I've made up my mind, sir. You, you shall not have to ask me twice what troubles me. I took you for someone else last night. That troubles me. That mistake? I know. That... someone else. Who is it? I... I don't know. Like me? I don't know. I never saw his face. The left arm is across the face. And the right arm is waved. Violently waved. This way. As if to say, for God's sake, clear the way. One foggy night, I was sitting here watching the patterns in the fire. And I heard a voice. Hello! Get out there! 
Telegraph both ways. Oh, well. I'm sure that this figure must be a deception. A deception of your sense of sight, I mean. A minor ailment of one of the delicate nerves that minister to the functions of the eye. No, I assure you, my friend, I've known of many such cases, and the impairment is not permanent. Experiment has proved these things to be so. Experiment? We must look to our rational faculties for an explanation. If we abandon reason, consider this imaginary cry. Do but listen for a moment to the wind in this unnatural valley. Even now, as we speak, the wild harp it makes of the telegraph wires I know that sound well enough, sir. Well, then. But still, I have not finished. Within six hours after the appearance, the memorable accident on this line occurred. through the tunnel, over the spot where the figure had stood.
remarkable coincidence, my friend. But no more than that. We are men of good sense. We must seek to understand the world by rational means. But we can allow coincidence. I think we can. But still, I have not finished. Now, that was just a year ago. Six or seven months passed, and I'd recovered from the surprise and the shock. When one morning, just as the day was breaking, I stood at the door and looked towards the red light. sir. They brought her in and they laid her down on this floor between us. It's true, sir, true. Precisely as it happened, so I tell you. Now, sir, mark this. The spectre came back a week ago. And it's been there now and again, by fits and starts. At the light? At the danger light. What does it seem to do? You know what it does. I've shown you. Besides, it, it does this. for it. It calls me for minutes together. In an agonized shout. Below there, look out, look out. It stands there waving to me. It rings my little bell. Twice, yesterday evening while I was here. You knew. What do you know of this? Well, nothing, my friend, I assure you. I simply observed you and made rational deductions. And I must tell you that that bell did not ring. My eyes were on the bell, my ears were on the bell, and it never rang. Except in the natural course of things. By the station communicating with the way. No, 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 no. I've never confused the spectre's ring with the man's. The ghost's ring, sir, is a strange vibration in the bell that it derives from nothing else. I've not asserted that the bell stirs to the eye. I, I don't wonder that you failed to hear it if you speak the truth, but I heard it. 
did the spectre seem to be there when you looked out? It was there! Both times? Both times! Will you come to the door with me now and look for it? Do you see it? No, I do not see it now. It is not there. Agreed. You see now, sir, what troubles me so dreadfully. What does this spectre mean? I'm not sure that I understand you. Oh, I think you do, sir. What is it warning me about? What is the danger? Where is the danger? Some dreadful calamity will happen to this line. It's not to be doubted this third time. Surely this is a dreadful haunting of me, but what am I to do if I telegraph danger? I can give no reason. They think I'm mad. Message, danger, take care. Answer, what danger, where? Message, don't know, but for God's sake, take care. They would displace me. What else will they do? Please, my friend, you must... Compose yourself. I am sure that... When I first stood there under the danger light, why did it not tell me where the accident was to happen if it must happen? And why did it not tell me how it could be averted if it must be averted? And why did it not tell me on the second occasion oh, she's going to die, keep her at home, and, and now what is it to be? And, and why me, for heaven's sake, a, a poor signal on this station? And why not go to somebody with credit to be, to be believed? And, and, and power to act! My dear friend, you must listen to me. You must compose yourself. Let us say that all these things are true. They are true. So be it. Very well. But try to take heed of this. Any man who thoroughly discharges his duty must do well. There is no more that you can do. And I have studied you these these, these past two nights. And I am convinced that no man could carry out his task with more attention and responsibility than you do. I hope so, sir. I, I, I do believe it's so. I'm sure that it is so. You must take comfort in this, that you understand your duty and discharge it to the smallest detail. These disturbing appearances, well, you, you can't be called upon to try to interpret them. Believe me, take comfort in the discharge of your duty. You cannot be to blame. I believe you are in the right of it, sir. I know I am. Well, I'll stick to my duty, then. Nothing else to be done. I'm heartily glad to hear you say it. I believe you've helped me tonight, sir, and I thank you for it. I'll willingly stay with you till dawn, if you wish. Oh, no, sir, no, I, I wouldn't hear of it. No, no I, I, I've got my work to keep me company. <laughs> well, perhaps you'll come again, sir. Indeed, I will. Oh. And I shan't call out. I would be grateful, sir.
Coming around the curve of the tunnel, sir, I, I saw him at the end. Like a, as if I saw him down the end of a perspective glass. Well, there was no time to shut off speed, sir. It was broad day, and I knew him to be very careful. He, he didn't seem to heed the whistle, sir. So I, I shut it off and I called to him. What did you say to him? I said, hello, below there, look out. I was waving at him. Look out! Look out! For God's sake, clear the way! <laughs> 